working on a new race for this video, the Dracartio. I got a pose here that I sketched out of a person singing. Then I redrew it as this new race. Originally, I called this new race design Dracon Tiefling. It was meant to be a half dragon person, half tiefling. Later, I decided there should also be versions and worlds with this humanoid that are functionally and visibly the same, but have a separate origin story, but they still count. At that point, I decided the race needed a new name. I still wanted an emphasis on dragon, as well as it to overall feel like the correct name to me. I came up with Tricartio. For here, I'm tracing over in Procreate from the photographs of the pencil artwork I originally did in my sketchbook. I'm using separate layers by putting the sketch layer underneath the line art. I can also lower the opacity on the sketch layer so I can easily see the differentiation between the lines in the sketch. You can also use different colors for the sketch layer. This helps as well. In order to come up with the name, I worked out several different options. This is what I always do. I wrote out some words on a scrap piece of paper that have to do with the race or the word I'm coming up with in my language. Then I also find words in other languages that have to do with that. And I also use a D percentile alphabet chart. I roll two 10 sided dice to get a number from one to a hundred and I have corresponding letters. I do this several times to get random letters. Sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. I use some of them or none of them and I just roll again if I want. That way I have more options and ideas rather than sitting and staring at a blank page. For the male, I decided I wanted a reflection, but a slightly different pose than the female. So I made a copy of the female pose, flipped it on an opposite layer horizontally, and lowered the opacity to trace over. Using green, I did the sketch layer. I also used orange on the same sketch layer to draw the front view of the head for the male here. On the same line art layer on top, I worked out all the line art. Here I'm doing color flats, one layer with all the color flats on it in order to alpha lock and use clipping masks over. Behind all those layers, I'm doing the sky and some little vignette details. Eventually, I'm going to change that pink sky into more of a blue one over top of the pink, just because I wanted the blue to contrast more with the pinky tones I'm actually going to be using for the other two figures. I decided I wanted most of them to have a sort of reptile or fish-like patterning, and they're meant to have very small scales, similar to a lizard, all over their skin, including on the tail. So I decided to look at different real animals to base this on. I also wanted there to be a lot of gold or bronze in the jewelry work here, and I was thinking about the overall theme of the clothing. While I designed, I kept a regional clothing or style fashion in mind, and I have them all look like they're actually from the same time and place, which also works well with their physical bodies. And you know, I like this style, art style. I decided that sometimes their tails might be more free hanging out the back, and sometimes the clothing might extend part way down the tail, and that they can just slip this clothing on. I was designing it in order to be visually appealing, while also thinking about how the clothing would be taken off and put on. I was picturing stretchy fabrics as well as clips. As I drew and painted in different individuals, I kept some features consistent. Thick, plushy hair, hooves, the general facial structure with large eyes, the fact that they all have three spines as eyebrows, clawed five-fingered hands, the more classically masculine male body type, which has a chin spike females don't, and the more classically feminine and breasted female type, because they are meant to be a mammalian species as well, so part reptile, part mammal, actually. And I also decided that regardless of gender, some have nose horns and some don't. Some have ear flaps with full, more elf-like ears, while others only have ear holes with a couple spines around them. I also give them all long tails with a poofy tip. I think I might go with the tails being prehensile as well. And I also decided that I wanted to have lots of different colorations available. In general, many are countershaded. I'm not sure if I'm going to go with more females or more countershaded. I think it'll just be varying by individual. There should be a lot of sub-varieties, tribes, races, and cultures, and it should vary a lot based on the world, time, and location. I think there's a lot of room for a lot of different individuals, even in one area, maybe. There's a lot of different colors and patterns available. This way it's more fun and people can individualize their own individual characters they'd like to make. As for stats and racial powers, I haven't quite come up with them yet, 
the additional racial powers and stats are still a little bit of a mystery. I definitely think I want them to have some sort of magical ability and some racial traits. I'm probably going to do the 5e D&D stats sometime soon, and I'm looking into publishing some of my 5e D&D content for my original creations, especially the races and creatures. Let me know if anyone seems interested in this. I still need to figure out how I'm going to do that while maintaining the original copyright on the ideas. This was entirely painted in Procreate. I used my 4K YouTube video size, so it's actually not that huge. But I can recommend a few tips in general. One is that I used some color palettes that I already previously made. One invaluable color palette has been my gold color palette. I used it for all the gold details here. I actually color picked gold off real gold bars in a photo that helped me come up with the actual colors for gold. I found a vast improvement since. Another is to alpha lock the line art layer so you can go over just the lines to quickly colorize them like I'm doing here. Remove the alpha lock to add additional details and things in. The other thing you can do is work in layers, alpha locking and clipping masking in various layers and set some to multiply for shadows. You can send some to lighten or other modes to get different effects. Many of these layers were actually on regular mode and I just layered things on top. By having all the skin colors on a layer underneath, then I did the clothing on top of that. A layer on top of that I did most of the hair colors, and then on top of that I did the final details. On top of that was the lines. Sometimes I used non-clipping mask layers to help with certain effects, such as by adding in a golden glow around all the gold. I used this on a non-clipping mask layer, so some of it went off into the air around it. Please enjoy this animated thunderstorm background. Hope you enjoyed that video and look forward to more little animated time lapses and backgrounds I've been working on. I'm still working on the animated end card. Well, Valerios, consider subscribing if you enjoy my videos and if you click the notification bell for post notifications, that would allow you to know when they're all posted. I am for new videos every Wednesday and I hope they don't get delayed. Please feel free to leave any questions, suggestions, constructive criticisms, and other comments in the comment section below. Please like the video if you liked it and look forward to future videos. Goodbye!